Hi everybody. In this video, I want to look at how you can put your own stamp on the standard grass in D5 Render. All right, let's get into it. Hi everybody. How's it going this evening? In this slightly shorter video than what I normally do, I want to look at how you can use the grass material in D5, but more specifically, how you can actually replace the underlying texture map and as such change your grass material. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. Here we are in SketchUp with just a flat ground plane with no texture applied, and there's no real thickness to it because that doesn't really matter too much. Okay, let me go and send this over to D5, and we'll take a look at how the normal default grass is going to look. There we go. Hit I on the keyboard to grab our eyedropper. I'm gonna move myself out of the way here a little bit, and you can see over here on the right, we're using a custom to standard grass. All right, if I change this to a grass material, this is what happens. And we can zoom in a little bit here. Go ahead and put my navigation to fly. You can kind of see what we have is really the, just the default grass. This should be familiar with that to anyone who's used D5 at all recently. Now, all in all, it looks pretty good. There is the issue of the grass edges, and that's a kind of a topic for another day. But the question is, can we actually just load our own grass material? You can see here, by default, we've got three types. And while these are pretty good, I found particularly this grass material too to be very, very useful. What if we wanted to load up our own? So here we are in Photoshop, and I have really just a regular 2048 pixel by 2048 pixel, just square map. This is going to be our default color map otherwise known as the really effectively the albedo, really just the default diffuse texture. I know there is a difference between those, but for, for our purposes, it's just a flat texture map. Now, I'm going to head and just save this out as a JPEG. It's not the best thing in the world, but, you know, it, it'll work. One thing I have noticed in doing this technique, you do want to make whatever, sort of whatever area you want to be different from the rest of the texture map effectively make that darker. So for example, this D5 render logo will only look okay-ish if you invert this. So if you had the lighter colors on the predominant area of the logo, that I have found does not look great. The thing you want to pop should be a lot darker than the surrounding texture map. Okay, okay everybody, so in this section of the video, I've gone and loaded up a new base color map. Now, you can kind of see it a little bit under this. The grass material has stayed applied, but all in all, you can still see a little bit. So to get this to work properly and to get to be able to see where we can kind of make some changes here to see what we're doing, we need to look at this slider right here, the blend amount. This is key for this effect to work. And I'm going to reduce this. And you can see quite simply, this blend amount is going to determine the level to which the texture map that you've just loaded up affects the grass itself. In other words, how much it blends between them. And so if we zoom in here, you can see now you're getting kind of the darker grass. This is consistent with the texture map itself, the sort of green image that we loaded up. Again, the, basically this right here. Okay, all in all, it's looking good, but you couldn't really use this in and of itself. It's obviously not lined up perfectly. So let's tweak that. I'm going to change the UVs. And, you know, luckily we are using a 2048 by 2048. And so that makes things a little bit easier. I'm going to put the display back to smooth just while we work. We don't need to see all of this grass. It's enough to see the texture map itself. And I'm going to place this right there. And then I am going to spin it. And you want to find something. In my case, it's going to be about 270. And I'm going to type that in. And there we go. And you can see how easy it is to bring in your own, really your own grass texture. Now, in real terms, why you'd probably want to use this, you could get some pretty diverse patterns going on. One of the things that Lumion doesn't have is a wide default array of grass materials. It's basically three types. And, and I'm not sure why I held up four fingers there, but it's three types. If you want grass, for example, for a project that looks a lot more manicured, then you're going to want something that has really sort of transitions between different areas of grass, what would effectively be different patterns within the grass or even grass blade length. And so by default, you just can't get that. 
but you could if you went into Photoshop and created quite simply just a grid pattern. So what that might look like is something akin to this. We'll go over here. I'm going to add a new layer. We can turn off the old ones. Let's add two new layers. Let's fill this with green. And then up here, for example, you really want to divide your really this texture map into really just different patterns. So you could do that using the pen or ruler. For my purposes, what we could just do is, you know, paint different grass materials in. And so, for example, pretend this is just a nice grid pattern. And I'm going to bring my brush down and holding down shift and holding down shift and holding down shift. And then if we went ahead and save this, save as a grass test cap, there we go. You can see it keeps the UVs and it keeps the overall pattern. You could even go in here and adjust the stretch a little bit and scale this down if you wanted to try and get more of a kind of complicated looking pattern or a pattern that resembled a lot more stripes. But it's kind of cool that you can actually do this. Now, okay, so the last thing I want to mention is real world uses. When would you actually utilize this? Uh, what I think is pretty cool, but it's kind of a niche market little thing. And the answer to that, I would argue, is a couple of use cases. The first is if you were maybe doing a video of a commercial property or commercial rendering, it could be really cool if the camera pans up from a grass that has a logo, possibly either your logo or your company's logo, or maybe the logo of the developer or builder who's working on the project. I think that could look really, really nice. Just as a nice transition as the camera moves up and pulls back, I think it could look pretty cool. Um, outside of that, outside of another very rare number of use cases where perhaps you, you are doing something with, for example, a sports field or stadium, and you do actually want the grass to sort of be physical and manifest and have patterns and, and designs on it, um, other than that, the only other use I can think of is using grass or ground materials in particular that are a little better than what we get by default. So I'll give you an example of that. I'm going to switch this back to just the regular grass here. And I am going to make sure that everything is kind of just put back to kind of normal here, just a little bit. You can kind of see the trim. It's very, very like hairy looking grass. So what I'm going to do is replace this base color map I am going to go back to my mega scans and I've got kind of a few here that I just downloaded recently. I'm going to go downloads and go to surface. And for example, let's do grass dried and I'm going to load this in. So as it currently stands, the base color map determines, if I get rid of all of this, effectively determines the kind of the, the look and feel of the grass, but also the ground. So what I would think about doing is maybe bringing in a mega scans material like this one here, and then applying your kind of like really just adjusting the height and the density. Now let's try this grass here using the same color map just to see how it works. Uh, material Grass material number two, I think is a lot more readable. So you can kind of see now, if your camera was low down and you're trying to depict a specific biome, you, you know, this is probably the easiest way to do that. You can show all of this soil and dirt and rock underneath and your grass is going to sit on top and you can tweak the blend amount like that. So if you had, for example, maybe a sandy area and you know, you just wanted to make sure that the grass that's sitting on top of it doesn't look out of place, we can do that with the blend amount. So now you can see, let's try another example. Let's go back to surfaces and maybe let's look at this sort of muddy soil and just see how that looks. All right, you can kind of see now because of the blend amount slider, the grass that's popping up is picking up the colors of the actual environment. And I think all in all, that looks pretty nice. It's not quite the same as Lumion's you know, environmental grass, that 3D grass, but it's not a bad way to replicate it either. Here, your grass could actually resemble the proper biome or environment that you're trying to render in. And all in all, I think that's pretty cool. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. If you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.